Okay, so today we're going to look at limits graphically. And we're going to take a look at things called piecewise functions. I'm not going to necessarily write it out formally with actual functions. I'm just going to show you guys uh, what we're looking at. So we're going to start out with graph. And we're going to make some function. And it's going to be a nice smooth function. And we're going to call it f of x. All right. So I'll pick some point A, again to remind you guys, then it has some limit L, and then we say that the limit as X approaches A of F of X is equal to L. All right, so this is a very simple graph because it's defined. It is nice and it is defined. But there are other things that can happen in these graphs. So let's take a look at one of those. Suppose we have a discontinuous graph. So what this means is that it looks like this and it has a hole at this point but it keeps going on from this point and we'll call this the point four and it's actually defined up here when we get to four it's defined at this point ten which is interesting so we can say that f of four is equal to ten so here's the question in this scenario what is the limit as x approaches 4 of this function g of x, which I should define as g of x, well, what is this? Now, intuition would say, well, this is equal to 10, because it's defined at this point 10. But is that necessarily true? And the answer is no, because if you remember from our definition, we have to take a look at the limit as x approaches 4 from the right, of g of x and the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of g of x. And what are these values? Well, let's take a look here. We're going to write in some values and we're going to say that this point right here where this gap is, this is at the point 5. And we say, well, from the left, it's going to 5. And then from the right, it's going to 5. So what is the limit as x approaches 4? of g of x. Well, the answer to this one is 5. And this definitely might not be intuitive, but by the definition is as x approaches it from the right and approaches it from the left. It doesn't know there's a gap here, because this is one small point in the graph where it's defined. But we don't look directly at 4. We look from the left and from the right. So these are tricky situations that you might be a little bit uncomfortable with. So we're going to try another example here. What about a scenario where we have a graph that looks like, hmm, there's a gap here, and then it's defined here, and it continues on, and we're going to call this function h of x. All right, so let's pick a point. This is the point 5. This is 3, and this is 9. Okay, so what do we know? Well, let's take a look as x approaches 5 from the left. Okay, of our function h of x, well, this is equal to 3, since it finally ends its course at 3 right about here. So this is equal to 3. And what about 5 from the right of our function h of x? Well, it goes here, and it's defined at 5, so that equals 9. Okay, that's cool. And, of course, let's have the information here that h of 5 is equal to 9. So what is the limit as x approaches 5 of h of x? Well, like the example before, we take a look at the limit from the left and the limit from the right, which is 3 and 9, which are not the same. So this limit simply does not exist. Now this is very counterintuitive because you might think, well, it's defined at this point right here. It's th there's a point five nine on the graph, and that would be the definition of the limit. But that's not the case, and it's important to remember to check the two requirements for a limit that x approaches five from the left and five from the right in this scenario where we're looking at the point five. If we take a look at the point seven. Well, then it's at this point right here, which if we were to 
guess where that was. I'd probably say that's about seven. Of course, this isn't accurate. This isn't a graph that has numbers. But these are very important things that you need to wrap your head around in order to understand things fully conceptually. So I'm going to leave you with one more example question. And you guys can pause the video once I'm done writing this question. And we can take a look at the answer. All right. So I'm going to find it up here. This is a very common graph you'll see. In fact, uh, let's call this a cool function. Let's let's give it a let's give it a a Greek letter. We'll call this sigma of gamma instead of f of x because I don't know. It's just cool names. Okay, so we want to look at this point A. We're going to call this point one, two, and three. So here are the questions I want. I just want you to find the limit as x approaches a of this cool function we have here, sigma of gamma. That's all I want you to find, so pause the video, see if you can find it, and we'll come back in a second. All right, so hopefully you were able to figure this out, and straight up, I'll give you the answer right away, it does not exist. And this is obvious because when we come from the left, it equals a different point, and when we come from the right, it's different. It's defined, so we'll give you the answer that if we take sigma at the point two, this is actually, sorry, sigma at the point A is equal to two. So if we take a look at where this is, we just go up, see where it's defined, what's defined here, and that is equal to two. All right, so that's simple. But let's take a look from the left. When we approach A from the left of this awesome function, then we get one. And when we approach it from the right, notice I write this out every single time, then we get three. And we know that these two numbers are not the same, so they can't have a limit. And that's the answer to that question. Hopefully you found this helpful. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at some tricks to find limits as well as some limit laws.